All right, so I'm going to wrap up what we've been doing this series over the last five days or the last 10 days. I wanted to start talking to you early, early, early about the year coming up, and then I wanted to talk to you into the year about the year going forward, about 2021 and what it's going to be like for us. 2020, of course, the worst year in modern times. 2021 starting off really, really challenging as well. A uh, lot of things going on. It does not mean that you cannot have the join our little guild. I'm a writer. We can talk about it, Michelle. Sure, you can post on uh, my my page and see if I can uh, if there's something there for me. Anyway, let me go back to this, and that is to say that uh, I saw this cartoon years ago these two dogs talking and one dog says, what's a new year's resolution? And the other one says, it's a to-do list for humans for the first week of the new year. That is so true for most of us. Now, if you've gone back and listened to all of these, and I encourage you to, if you really want 2021 to be the best year of your life, if you really want to accomplish the goals that you've set for yourself, or if you want to just go, this is my new year's resolution, and then it never happens, you can do that. But if you're serious about this, go back and watch my previous jump starts, which are on my blog on this subject. Go to willbowen.com forward slash blog. And you'll see that I invite you to write out a post journal letter. In other words, write it out a year from now. 2021 was the best year of my life because then write out the things that made 2021 the best year of your life. It should take you five minutes. Write it on one sheet of paper. Then circle one thing that if that only one thing, like for me, it's my television show. If only that one thing happens, you will consider 2021 to have been a successful year. Next, I'm not going to walk you through the other six things, but there are six things in there that you need to consider, such as number one, you would already have what it is you want if you didn't have paradigms that were preventing you from having it. Let me say that again. You have subconscious. They are part of your subconscious mind that have prevented you from realizing the success that you seek heretofore. You've got to change those paradigms and you change them through spaced repetition. I have recorded out a thing that I listen to every morning when I take Teddy out. It's 11 minutes and 37 seconds. And I listen to it every afternoon, 11 minutes and 37 seconds. Me saying the opposite of what my negative paradigms are around the thing I'm trying to change. In other words, I have negative paradigms. So what I've done is I've realized this is my belief. So I took the opposite of that belief and I just repeat it in the form of an affirmation over and over. I, I recorded it myself saying it a hundred times using my phone. So then in the morning, I take my AirPods, put them in my ear, and then Teddy and I walk out. And by the time I've gotten back, first thing in the morning, I hear that. And then usually the last thing I do at night, unless my girlfriend does it, is take Teddy out for his walk. I listen to it again. And what I find, I want to tell you some honest truth here. What I find is I'm having some serious resistance to this. And this is normal. I want to make sure that you maintain your commitment, forgive my banged up finger, that you maintain your commitment for what it is you said that you want to do. And one of the things I want you to understand is expect resistance. Expect resistance. When we used to teach, when I was a minister of a church, one of the principles I taught was tithing. I still practice tithing. I believe tithing is the most direct path to success, true success in every area of your life. And I would always tell people that when you begin to tithe, that is, give 10% of your gross income to where you are spiritually fed, 
then yes, you are going to experience financial windfalls. Things are going to become easier and better in your life, but not at first. Not at first. Things are going to become more chaotic. Things are going to become more difficult. And things are going to become more challenging. Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of the Unity Movement, calls this chemicalization. And the way he describes it is, imagine you've got a mug. <laughs> my mug is dirty with coffee on it. Okay? And it says, together with you is my favorite place to be. All right? But imagine if I got coffee in the bottom of this mug, which I do. But this coffee recommend, uh, represents all those dirty, nasty, subconscious beliefs that are beneath the surface that have kept me from achieving what I want. Well, let's say that I begin to run fresh water into the top of the cup. As the fresh water goes into the cup, it is going to take the yuckiest sediment of the coffee and it's going to bring it to the top. And that's what's going to happen for you. I don't mean may happen for you. I'm telling you that, Natasha, as you are writing this book, as those others of you who haven't yet shared your goals with me today, and that's okay, as you begin to do it, it's going to bring up some junk. When we talk about tithing, we always say that, great, start tithing. We used to do a tithing uh, guarantee that if people signed a commitment and would tithe, they didn't have to tithe to our church, but whatever portion of their church tithe to the church uh, they had made, if they felt tithing was not beneficial to them, in six months, we'd give them their money back. And in all those years, I think we only ever had one person ask for their money back. And it turned out that there were some other issues. And we ended up, I forget it, it worked out great. The point I'm trying to make is that Everybody who signed one of those tithing commitment forms, I would say to them, expect a financial challenge, not a windfall. Expect a financial challenge. For me right now, let me tell you my challenge with my TV show. I came up with the idea. I worked for weeks on it. I wrote the proposal. I sent it off to one publisher, a uh, producer rather. Got, didn't get any feedback. That's okay. I didn't really expect any back. However, as I began to look at it, and, and all of a sudden, all these people came out of the woodworks in television, just started crossing my path in front of me. So I set the goal. I wrote it out. All of these people started coming right in front of me. You'd think that it would be a cakewalk. No, it's not, because I still don't have the, the format of the show the way I like it or want it in an easy to explain replicable uh, format. And I need it in that replicable format because my book has been translated in so many languages. There are countries all over the world who would want a Will Bowen TV show. So I've got to create something that is repeatable around the world, not just something we would subtitle. So it's a lot of, of details. As I keep explaining to people, it's like trying to solve a Rubik's Cube. And every time you move something, something else gets moved out of place. So I want you to expect that. Now, I'm going to give you a bit of an assignment. Number one, expect the unexpected because <laughs> it's going to happen. Expect resistance both from other people and from the universe as you begin to move through this. Because I always tell people, and I got this from Edwin Gaines, that when that financial challenge comes up after you've decided to uh, tithe, that when you stick with your commitment, no matter what, just stay with your commitment, the universe then goes, wow, we've got a player here. We've got somebody who's serious. And that's when things begin to move even more in the direction that you want to do it. You want to go. So here are my suggestions for you to stay on track. Number one, expect resistance. Number two, read your 2021 letter daily. Remember, I told you it'll take you five to 15 minutes to write it. It'll take you less than 60 seconds to read it. Better yet, read it into your phone and hear your own voice reading it back to you twice a day. You know, the people who think these kinds of things are silly are the people who never accomplish anything.
Some of the most successful people, it's amazing to me, do all of these little rituals. They write things out. They have things that run in their heads, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you knew these people like I do, you would see these very behaviors. So read your 2021 daily letter daily. Set up reminders to keep you on track. If there is something you need to accomplish by a certain day, or if you want to make sure that you're writing for three hours a day, block it out in your calendar. Do it now. Be serious. If someone who absolutely knew how to accomplish what it is that you're going to accomplish this year was taking over your life and your calendar, what would he or she do? Block out your calendar. And then the next thing and the last thing is measure your success along the way. If you put down, oh, I'm going to do this and da 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 if you don't forget about it, in the next 60 days, which you probably will, you certainly will forget about it in the next six months, unless you ask yourself, how am I doing towards your goal? So put a monthly reminder in your calendar. I have minders that pop up all the time. Have you done this? Did you remember this? Are you working on this? And I appreciate those reminders. My ego hates it. My ego does not want to be held accountable. You've got paradigms that are working against you. They're going to keep you from having a great year. If you'll follow what I suggested, you're going to have the best year of your life, and you're also going to enjoy it, and you're going to help the people around you more than you can imagine. Michelle Giroso says, join our Writers Guild. Like I said, send me more information. We can talk about it. Don't message me, please. I, I usually don't like to get Facebook messages. Just put it on um Facebook.com forward slash Will Bowen, right here where we are. Just post on this page. Say, hey, Will, I was wondering if you'd like to join our Writers Guild. And I'll reach out and we'll find out more. I'm truly a believer in tithing. Absolutely. You know, tithing is the key. Willow Drinkwater says persistence is a gift. Um, <laughs> I always like to think of uh, Stephen Wright, the comedian, said that his friend took his dog and walked him all the way from New York to Miami and back and said, you're done. In other words, he did one big thing one time, and that was it. Well, as we know, that's not it. It's lots of little things over time. Little things over time. I remember I was in one of those Ripley's Believe It or Nots one time, and I saw that this man had copied the entire King James Version. They had it lying out there for you to see. It was under glass. But you could see that some of the pages turned so you could see it was the entire King James Version written under uh, written down. The man had copied it verbatim. Do you know how long it took him to do this? I want you to guess. You don't have to put it in the comment section, or at least mentally guess how long it might take you to sit down and copy the entire King James Version. If I'm not mistaken, which is a big book, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, it took him 18 months doing it 90 minutes a day. What can you accomplish in one year putting 90 minutes a day towards your goal? Watch one less Netflix show, read one less Reddit post, do a little less chatting and do a little more moving in the direction you want to go. Listen, this is all I have to say to you about 2021. I've given you literally the best information I have from a lifetime of failing at goals and also from a lifetime of achieving goals. And I'm here to tell you, this is how you succeed. Michelle says, my goal to successfully rewrite my book by April 30th. That is so awesome. By the way, can I just tell you all something? If you want to get a book published, don't write a book. Never, ever write a book if you want to get a book published. Thank you, Natasha. You want to write a uh, proposal. You don't want to write the book. And there's a number of reasons why. But publishers actually want to have a bit of a participation in the construction and, and the creation of a book. And if you're one of these people that says, well, I don't want anyone touching my art and my work, that's great. You'll be one of those people that says 12 books. 
I'm, my books have sold 4 million because my publishers have added to them on an ongoing basis and made them the great pieces of literature that they are. I consider this to be a great piece of literature, To You Love God, my daily devotion. You know why? Because I wrote 2,000 of these. Somebody picked my daughter. I had 7,000 of these. I beg your pardon. My daughter then went down and uh, whittled them down to 270. I wrote another 100. My publisher went through them. It was a collaborative effort. A dozen people have their hands on this book. Is it mostly my writing? Yep, sure is. So expect people, want people to participate in your goal. You're not going to achieve this big goal if other people don't participate. So open yourself up to that. Maybe we'll do a whole thing on how to write a book. I actually did a write, did a thing on it, I think, a couple of weeks ago. So check that out. Thank you, everybody, for being with me. I'm going to be back in Miami in a day or two. Today, I'm still in Key Largo. But I look forward to being with you. I've already mapped out what we're going to talk about tomorrow. And that is, anger is making you stupid. What? Yep. Anger is making you stupid. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. Join me. Look forward to seeing you. Enjoy today. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint-free world. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high.